Welcome to AUSA's Army Matters podcast. This is Family Voices with Patty Barron. It's my pleasure to have as our guest today, Angela Caban, Program Director of Military Saves, Consumer Federation of America. Angela, I'm so excited to have you here. Welcome. Hi, Patty. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here, and I appreciate you inviting me. Absolutely. And you've got quite the story to share. And so I think we're going to go ahead and dive right into it. Angela, you were selected as the 2014 National Guard Spouse of the Year and celebrated as the founder of a wonderful organization called Homefront United Network. We'll talk about Hun in a minute, but a little while ago, you were featured in a Military Spouse magazine article, and it really caught my attention when I read it. It's really a very personal story of your struggles and triumphs with your family's financial readiness. And I think our audience would be really excited or appreciative to hear that story. Can you share it with us? Absolutely, Patty. Um, so Military Spouse Magazine approached me last year to write for their March issue, which was a personal finance issue. And at the time, I worked for USAA. So they had asked if I had any financial uh, stories or advice that I could possibly share with their audience. And, you know, I had thought on this for quite some time because up until that point, no one really knew our story other than some family members and one really close friend. Um, and we had you know, quite a bit financial struggle struggle that led us to filing bankruptcy. So this was such a hard and personal story to write. Even as a freelance writer for 10 years, you know, this was definitely one of the most difficult assignments. I thought about it. I spoke with my husband and we decided that if we didn't share our struggles, how could we possibly help others who are potentially going through the same things? So one thing that I always make very known to everyone, I am not a personal finance expert. However, I do educate myself currently as well in the past on this topic, and I am extremely passionate in the financial field line of work, working for both USA and now working with military saves. So, of course, um, this topic was a, was embarrassing. You know, I'll just say, call it what it really was, as no one really comes out and says, you know, hey, we really messed up, you know, our financial, um, you know, savings uh, here, and we might potentially wind up homeless. So I think, too, in this military community, financial struggle is still something extremely difficult to open up about. Mm -hmm. So... The article that I wrote, the title was Bankruptcy Saved Our Family, and you can actually see it online on Military um, Spouse Magazine. And I think it was definitely a learning lesson for our family. And part of the reason why I titled it that, because we learned to work together and kind of get our act together as well, you know, as as a military family. So um, starting in the beginning, you know, not everything you see on social media is perfect. You know, mm -hmm. no, one knew, no one knew the struggle. You know, they just mm -hmm. kind of. Um, saw the happiness. They didn't know that my husband lost his job, you know, that we were having difficulty paying our bills. Um, and this was all short of a few months before having my, my daughter, my second child. So they saw the excitement of the, the birth of my daughter, the excitement of my graduation after working, you know, my master's degree. And part of it really did have to do with, um, you know, me just not wanting to, anybody to shame my family or my husband. You know, he's an extremely hard worker and I would never want anybody to, you know, think badly of him. So um, we depleted our savings, um, which one thing I will say, we did have quite a bit of savings uh, um, in our savings account. Um, however, I was the only one working full time at the time. You know, I, I did some freelance work here and there, and we really just depended on my husband's drill pay since he was in the Army National Guard at the time. And that really wasn't enough. You know, we discussed him even going back active duty because at that point, you know, he was not getting any calls back. He was going on multiple interviews a week. Um, and then, as you can imagine, our marriage was struggling. Finances does that. I feel like there's always something to fight about, you know, so things were just really bad. And my husband, you know, did everything that he possibly could from delivering newspapers. And then finally, he did manage to get orders for an entire month on ADSW orders, as they call them in the National Guard. So when he got back, unfortunately, I didn't have great news for him. You know, we were summoned to court. Our property manager wanted to evict us from our home. Here I am with a five month old baby, you know, my son, who was five at the time. We went back and forth on what we could possibly do. We didn't really want to vocalize this to our military community. We were ashamed. We were scared that he would get in trouble. Mm -hmm. So we spoke, you know, with an attorney about Chapter 13 bankruptcy, and they explained that this would allow us to keep all our assets. We wouldn't be evicted. We could keep our cars. We would, however, have to pay all our debt back in a monthly installment. 
So, you know, it really did seem like this is something that could help us get back on that track, you know, wipe the slate clean, pay everybody back within the four year plan. Um, but it wasn't easy, Patty. I like to tell everybody this because we did have to attend various counseling sessions um, with both the attorneys and a financial counselor. And then finally, when they uh, saw that we were serious about repaying our debt, we did decide to file for a Chapter 13. So um, I always tell people, you know, we it wasn't like we were free. We did have to pay all that debt back, and it was quite a bit. And then we also had to go to counseling for both finances as well as our marriage. We really had to repair a lot of the damage that we had done on both that and, you know, our relationship. We also had to learn a lot about finances and how to teach our children about money. We never mm -hmm. wanted this to be something that they looked back on and said, well, mommy and daddy never really talked to us about it. Obviously, my daughter was very young, but my son, you know, we were very open about the process and how we made some really bad mistakes and we really had to fix it. So, um, you know, we, to make this incredibly long story short, we were able to pay our debt off in four years. You know, it was extremely difficult worth it in the end. You know, in 2017, we purchased our first home, something that we really never thought would be possible. So I think really coming out and, and talking about the story and the struggles and everything we've learned has been so beneficial for both, you know, our family as well as others who have come back and said that it's really helped them. Angela, that is just an incredible, incredible story that you shared, not because it's so unusual, but because it's probably something that many, many of our military families face. And I would imagine that, especially in the National Guard, where you, um, you know, the regular one drill weekend and then one drill month, but all of a sudden, if you find yourself being deployed or having to answer to a natural disaster, you have to leave your job to go do that. And that can put a strain with the employer if that's a constant. But when a spouse loses their job, when you're a two income family and you're really counting on that income to make ends meet, it's not even to put things into savings or a college fund, but it's really two incomes to make ends meet. As some of our families have told us they have to do, losing one of those incomes, as you say, can be devastating. And it is, and you're right. It can be very embarrassing to speak openly about this because it's something that so many people don't talk about. We have been really concentrating on financial readiness this year. Our calendar year goes from July to June. So we're kind of wrapping up the financial readiness conversations. And I'm so happy that we're doing this podcast with you because I think of all the things that we've done, this really is a real story that hits home and can really help an awful lot of people. So one thing I want to ask you is, if you had to map out the vital steps that you took to our listeners that might be on the verge of bankruptcy or financial crisis, what would you tell them? And you mentioned talking to an attorney, but that costs money too. So if you can just kind of talk a little bit about how you were able to go and speak to an attorney and what steps you think are vital to getting to the point where you are at now, which is in a really great place. Yeah. So, I mean, the first thing that I would say is you need to speak with your spouse about finances. I can't tell you how many couples reach out to me and say, I have no clue what the other one is spending or maybe a, a spouse who's deployed and I get it. They're deployed. So whoever's on the home front is really in charge of everything. And finances really is number one. It's that military spouse's, you know, role. However, they come back and say, well, I don't know what my spouse is paying, like what bills are going out. So you really need to lay it all out and, and get that visual that you need with your spouse on your finances. I think that was definitely a problem in my relationship with my husband because I was so used to him going away and I would take care of everything, but then I would get overwhelmed, Patty. Mm -hmm. And he came back. I didn't want to burden him with any of the finances. And then when he was out, of work for so long, you know, I tried to almost like put a bandaid over it thinking, no, we'll be fine. I'll make it to the next payday or I'll get a freelance gig and we'll be okay. So that would be my first thing. You just have to be transparent. And then going back to getting financial advice, you definitely need to speak with a professional. They're going to help you assess your situation because I feel like every situation is differently. Others might not qualify for chapter 13. You might be in a completely different situation financially. So they're going to really lend you that good, that perspective that you really can't see because it's personal to you. And then they'll also be able to give you other options. Maybe bankruptcy isn't an option for you. They'll help you create um, a plan to help you get out of debt, you know, a repayment plan of some sort. 
And then another thing too, I always say is your debt, organizing your debt. You know, you don't really know what you owe until you see it. So write make a list if you have to write it out, go over it with your spouse when you're talking about the bills that need to be paid. And, you know, if you do determine that bankruptcy is where you need to be, you're going to need that list anyway to provide to your attorney because the attorney is really going to be the one that says, okay, here's where you are. Here's how much you have to pay back. Because a lot of times if you do file for chapter 13, like you said, number one, the professional counsel is expensive. And number two, the trustee that you have to pay every month, that's still a payment. I think our payment was like $500. And I remember thinking, wow, that's like a car payment. So when you're seeking professional counsel, there are, you know, through the state, lots of programs that help families with that retainer fee. I know that a lot of times they'll lump it kind of into your trustee payment every month so that if you don't have the full like thousand dollars, you know, to pay up front, they could be very accommodating to that. But definitely I know a website that we had used was findlegalhelp.org and it's a nonprofit. And not only does it help you find attorneys in your area, it helps you find attorneys that will match you to your current situation. So I almost feel like it's not really taking advantage of you and it really helps you get that picture and All the consults are free. Like I said, using this website will help you really determine who you need to speak to and, you know, they'll help work with you and your family. So those are always like the first things I tell people to do because I know it's overwhelming, but getting that clear picture of what you owe and where you are financially is definitely the first step. That's great. And I think there are other resources as well. If you just kind of want some help with your everyday financial readiness, as you probably know, the USAA Educational Foundation, not to be mistaken with the USAA Bank, but the Educational Foundation, if you were to go to their website, there's just a plethora of wonderful information there about lots of different topics and ideas for handling your finances. And that just kind of leads me into the exploration of your current position, because Angela, I've been a fan of yours for a long time, ever since you were (laughs) the 2014 National Guard Military Spouse of the Year. I I saw where you went to work for USAA, and you were an ambassador, I think, with them and did some writing with them and whatnot. And then so excited when I saw that you had gone over to Military Saves. What can you tell us about Military Saves? And what would you like our audience to know? So, you know, I I feel like a a fangirl because it was a dream come true when I saw this position open up for Military Saves. It's an organization and a program that I use as a military spouse myself. And I I continue to recommend, obviously, to others. But even when I wasn't working for them, I said, you know, this is really great. And it's it's not something that you just do once a year. You really need to to look at it as, as a whole, you know, a picture. So for those that are not familiar with the program, Military Saves, you know, is an organization we motivate and support uh, military families to save money, reduce debt, and build wealth. That's kind of our mission statement there. But um, we support through finding financial action. You know, and this starts obviously with taking the Military Saves Pledge, which um, is pretty much a promise that you make for to yourself. Um, it's a goal. And it starts you uh, off by creating a simple savings plan that that you can actually follow. It's realistic and it works for you. I think a lot of times people get overwhelmed and they feel like, well, it's never enough. You know, I don't have enough money to start saving. So we really do help with those resources. Um, You can start small. You know, you don't have to have a lot of money to save it. We recently did financial readiness forums at Schofield Barracks. Poor me, I had to go to Hawaii. But... (laughs) But it was part of our land pack symposium and exhibition that we do every May. And my role in that exhibition and a symposium is to go to Schofield Barracks, where the majority of our soldiers are, and provide a family f- uh, readiness forum of some kind. As I said, financial readiness was something that I really wanted to focus on this year. And we partnered with the Office of the Secretary of Defense and had the Director of Financial Readiness, Andy Cohen, as one of our speakers. Uh, You might know Andy. He's just awesome. And we also had one of the financial counselors that is out in Hawaii also join us. And we had a two-hour event. We did it five times. And five sessions of this two-hour financial readiness forum, we educated 1,500 soldiers, which is an awful lot of soldiers. We educated one military spouse. We had one military spouse that said, I've been waiting for this forum since I saw it advertised, and I really wanted to come and and hear what you all had to say. It was exciting to have that many soldiers educated, but it was really disappointing not to have military spouses in the audience. And I realized that I had not thought it through well, because military spouses, especially if they're 
you know, raising young children and it's summer, kids are home, you're not going to find the time to go to a two hour forum in the middle of the day in a theater at Schofield Barracks. And so, and so we're really trying to think about, you know, how do we reach our spouses? Because as you said earlier, Angela, and we're the ones, you know, my husband also did a 30 year career that are the everyday bill payers. They're, they're off and doing their thing and we're kind of taking care of everything that's going on at home. And at the very end of the forum, I put my mom hat on because I'm probably older than everybody. And, uh, and, I, and I looked at all the soldiers in the audience and I said to them, if you do not go home today and talk to your spouse and ask them this question, in your opinion, how are we doing financially? I said, then you have just wasted your time and you have jeopardized your future, your spouse's future, and your children's future. This is important because it's all about you and your family. And they really did perk up. And what really surprised me was there was like a divide, if you will, in the audience. Those that were aware of financial readiness and the basics were really starting to pay a little bit more attention to how much money they were spending on a car payment, you know, whether or not they really needed this particular new exotic iPhone or whatever. And where they needed a lot of support was with the understanding of the blended retirement system, because many of the soldiers there were young soldiers that were part of this new system. Those that had no clue really had no clue. And you could see that they were kind of on the road to possibly getting into trouble because they didn't have an awareness of where their money was going, because they didn't have a budget, because they weren't saving for a rainy day or a crisis. And as you mentioned early, it was your savings account that really kind of saved you initially because you had money to draw from. But when that goes away, it goes away. So having said all that myself, I'm wondering what your favorite tool is or your favorite product is, either from Military Saves or any other place that you've been that has really helped you kind of synthesize that concept of, I need to know where my money's going and I want to save for a rainy day. Right. No, that's a wonderful, you know, question. And I think it really does vary on, like, again, having that savings account before filing for bankruptcy really did save us for quite some time. I think that that's really the purpose of an emergency fund. That's what you need it for. And I think just really depending on your family's situation, um, the amount that you need to save is different. That looks differently for everyone. But to start with military saves, I, I think, you know, the obvious answer here is the starting with the pledge. I mean, the pledge really um, motivates many to make that goal. I think when they see it in writing, they write it down. It's a reminder to them that says, you know, whether you're saving for an emergency fund or you're saving for a boat or a vacation, you know, that is something that you can put a visual picture on and say, wow, you know, every week I'm going to dedicate saving this amount or maybe every payday. So I think for me, starting with that promise to yourself is something that motivates my, even just myself, my husband too, you know, and one thing that I've learned throughout the years is that if you go into your savings account and let's say you log online and you see how it says, you know, Angela's savings account, I would change that name and I would change it to whatever it is I was saving for. And actually a really good friend of mine from USA, uh, JJ Montanero, and I know you know him. I love uh, him. He taught this to me and I said, that is the smartest thing ever. So for instance, when we were saving up for Disney World, I literally named my savings account Disney World Money. And you'd be surprised that mental trick you play on yourself, you will not touch that money. So rename your savings account to something that you are really working hard for, you know, and uh, you're not going to touch that money. I promise you that. Um, and again, that's why I think... Um, a lot of people get discouraged. They feel like it's never enough. And I think if you start small, it is. But another thing, another tool that I love that Military Saves offers is our text to pledge. So again, going back to the pledge, whether or not you've already taken the pledge for the year or do you want to take the pledge, you simply text Military Saves to 877-877 and you get personalized gold-based messages to your phone. I mean, we are on our phones 
multiple times, if not hundreds of times daily, you know, we're checking mm -hmm. email, we're on Facebook, we're having conversations via text message. So why not incorporate your savings goal messaging to something that you already have in the palm of your hand? So I think it's just so unique that we're able to offer that. And again, everything is customized to your goal. So if you want to save for retirement or if you want to save for that emergency fund, we send you those tips and the reminders. And we're really just trying to hold you accountable and checking in with you to really encourage and support and ultimately motivate you to save, you know, towards that specific goal. And we, um, you know, it, it's really about that connection that we make, the personal connection with the finances, which like you had mentioned earlier, um, it's something that really does need to be, uh, you know, spoken on. And I think people can relate to that, you know, to the, to the personal uh, touch that we put on it. So yeah, I would say that those are definitely my two, my go-tos. Those are great. And I, I love the pledge. I'm wondering if you can download it, frame it and put it in your kitchen so you see it every day. <laughs> Absolutely. And I encourage people to do that. It's almost like a vision board, right? <laughs> mm -hmm, exactly. And then the text part is so encouraging. I'm, I'll am i go ahead and, and be honest too. I've started to gain weight and I've been a little bit freaked out by it. So I did start on this online program that sends me texts and messages every day. And, and it really makes a difference because it's almost like a friend of mine is checking in on me. But luckily, I don't know that friend. I don't have a face to that friend. All, all I know is that that friend's sending me a text and reminding me that I probably shouldn't have that donut for breakfast. <laughs> so, Angela, in, in the um, short time that we have left, I'd like us to chat a little bit about Homefront United Network, which is a really great organization that you started back when your husband was deployed to Iraq. How are things going? Tell us a little bit about it. Oh, wow. Things are wonderful. And thank you for asking. You know, Homefront United Network has been around since 2010. And as you mentioned, I started that really as a place for me to share my thoughts. My husband, when he the very first time he deployed, you know, we were National Guard, Army National Guard family, and we were living normal civilian lives, living in a civilian community. And then one day he comes home and he says, oh, I got orders to go to Iraq for 15 months. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, this was insane to me that it could even be happening to us. Um, but it did. And instead of getting all upset and just really um, not, you know, communicating with other military families, I put myself out there. That's how I've made so many connections in this community. And one of the platforms that I've used is the Homefront United Network. It's a blog. It's resources. Um, really just wonderful. And now we have over 10 writers or well, bunch of volunteer and guest bloggers. We've been able to really just open it up to more than just National Guard and Reserve, but more of really, I like to call it bridging that gap between the civilian uh, community and the military community. Because one of the things I always say is that you really can't blame them for not really understanding your life if you're not sharing what's going on. And I think that having the best of both worlds, as I say, both my military community and my civilian community has helped me to grow as a person and to really be able to get through the many, many deployments that came after that one. So, um, you know, the Homefront United Network, like I say, is just there as a support resource. And we encourage everyone to be open and honest about, you know, where they are in their life, whether you're active duty, you're reserved your guard, um, every single branch of the military, retired, you know, veterans. It's just a wonderful place for people to really engage and, and talk about various things. And not even just military life. Like we have um, topics on finances. We have topics on food, traveling. Uh, because like I always say, military spouses, we're more than just the military. And I encourage people to just really talk about what's important to them. So, you know, it's it's wonderful to see how how, how much it's grown in, in the short, almost 10 years, actually. Wow. <laughs> I know time does go by really fast. And I know that you and I have worked on a couple of forums. And I'm going to give a shout out to the AUSA Fort Dix chapter, because the times that we've been able to actually work with military spouses together is with that Dix chapter, and they're fantastic. And you are fantastic, Angela, you are, are really a powerhouse. Absolutely someone that I really admire. I've watched you now for a little while, you know, raise your family, your wonderful husband, the fact that you're Latina, and I'm a Latina, that helps too. <laughs> But I uh, really am just so proud to know you and, and for um, very proud that you shared this very personal story with our audience. Any last thoughts before we end this podcast? Well, first, thank you, Patty, for saying all that. Like I said, I, I don't know where I would be in my life if, if it wasn't for my military community. All those years that I went to AUSA and I remember the first time meeting you. And so I, I value so much everything that you do for our community. And just thank you for the focus that you put on National Guard and Reserve families. It's gone. 
um, you know, it's grown in so many years. It, we're definitely in a much better place because of organizations like AUSA. So thank you for that, of course. Um, but yeah, I guess, um, you know, this military community is all about learning from others. So I think what I value the most is hearing the personal stories from those and then learning from what others have experienced. So I think if we as a community can really just voice that, we're all extremely eager to help and support each other, especially if we're going through a rough patch in our lives. So I hope that by sharing this story, I can help inspire others who might feel that there's no way out or they might be scared to reach out to someone. Um, so please, if you're, you know, if you are going through something like that, reach out, you know, before things potentially get worse. And um, there's absolutely no shame in asking for help. I think if anything, it really just shows the strength that you have and ensuring, you know, you're doing what's best for you and your family. So I think as a military community, we, we definitely do a wonderful job of lifting each other up. I would have to agree 100%. And I think you're right. Um, action shows strength. Strength is power and power gets results, which is something I'm going to coin now because that was pretty good. <laughs> Angela, thanks again so very much. And um, we've come to the end of our podcast episode. To all our listeners, thank you for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to the Army Matters podcast on iTunes and everywhere podcasts are found. Keep it locked here for all Army Matters and for next week's episode featuring Army thought leaders. I am Patty Barron with Family Voices. And as always, family strong, Army strong.